Welcome back to Queerly Thinking. I am your host, Reese Wheatley. And I'm co-host Samuel Stone. Welcome back. It's nice to have you back Thank for this you. episode. Thank you. Happy to be back. Happy First Amendment week, everybody. Technically, Woo-hoo! it was last week and we're filming a little late, but that's okay because it's still First Amendment week and it, as it should be every week. And I mean, Einstein said time was relative, so we got to keep that in mind. <laughs> that is also <laughs> true. That's a good point. Well, how you been, Sam? You know what? Before I answer that question, let me take a big old gulp. Oh, my God. Biggest thing I did was shave. That was the biggest thing we I did. We see that. We can see that. And we can see my gorgeous face now. Uh, I think it looks cute. <laughs> thank you. But actually, it like over my absence, it was good. I did some internal reflecting, and I'm in a good place. That is so good to hear. We love some internal reflecting, don't we? Everybody. <laughs> We're in a silly, goofy mood today. So um, I guess we'll carry on with these, like, somewhat not funny subjects um but i am also good um just catching up with classes after some craziness you know life can be that way and yeah life can kind of just uh sweep the rug from under you <laughs> literally no literally that is 100 percent how the past like month of my life has felt yeah it feels like a looney tune skit by this point <laughs> same same i'm just about there with you um so last episode was sad without you sad news to report last episode but this one we're gonna try and switch it up a little bit and talk a little bit more about some just some random stuff going on in the community Mm -hmm. because um some of it's lighthearted, some of it's funny some of it is fun and i guess we can get right to it if you're if you unless you have anything else to add jump into it got you so the first thing that i felt the need to say you know after i talked with some people about the last episode was I felt the need to point out that the only reason that I, I've i tried to make this very clear throughout episodes and everything, but the only reason I do this podcast is to educate people and to do my very best to, to be as visible as possible. And that's the whole goal of this. And um, trans people don't owe you anything. I promise you that. They don't owe you anything, whether you are trans or not trans or et cetera, a part of the community. If you would like to be educated about transness, then you can research that yourself or Mm -hmm. listen to this podcast or go find some other cool podcasts um, by some other queer people that are also really good. And I'm happy to give recommendations to anybody. But I just wanted to make it a point to say that it's not anyone in the LGBTQ's community job to educate you personally. Right. Um, whether, Whether they're family or not, honestly, if you have questions... Feel free to ask, I mean, depending on, you know, who the person is you're talking to. But I do this because I want to, not yeah. because I have to. Yeah. If you want to better yourself as a person and be more educated, don't rely on other people. The only person that can better yourself is you. So Exactly. That That is a perfect point. I would kiss you. But I know. The, <laughs> <laughs> the poetry in my absence. <laughs> I know, yeah. You can tell that Sam's really been doing some Shakespeare-like thinking. This is my thinking. brain juice. Hold on. Let me get another big gulp oh in right here. Oh, my God. All of it. Oh, almost all of it. Wow. Almost, I tried. They really haven't had a lot to drink today. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> they even took the the ad off for you. Well, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I wanted to make yeah, clear we that we weren't Coke. sponsored. Yeah, like, we're, we're not sponsored by Coke. Coke hit us up, but like, you know. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, but I just wanted to make that, that little point because I had some people ask some questions, and I'm always, always open to questions, literally no matter what they are, most of the time. But, um... Any other trans person, I'm sure, does not want to share their whole life story, unlike me, who's, like, airing it everywhere, right? So um, don't get too used to that in life. But I did want to talk about Dylan Mulvaney. I love Dylan Mulvaney. Have you have you seen her on TikTok? The name sounds familiar, but, but remind me about her a bit. Okay, she is a trans woman. I don't want to exclusively say that she is a Broadway performer, but I know that she's an actress, I think pretty sure okay she's performed in broadway shows before wow and she just hit a year of being a trans woman wow um middle of march maybe Hmm. and so she had this like big production that she put on and like jonathan vaness was there there was Hmm. a bunch of people and it was gorgeous and we love dylan mulvaney she's also beautiful so please look her up she sounds cool yes 
also very talented, just very mm -hmm. talented person. But she's faced some backlash for some of the stuff. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Um, she's faced some, some backlash for some ads that she's recently done. Um, and it, excuse me, the subject is a little, it's funny at this point, just because <laughs> so many people are doing so many things to go out of their way to like hate on her as a trans woman. So Dylan Mulvaney, a few, maybe a month ago, I think, mm -hmm. posted an ad for Bud Light for March Madness. And <laughs> the response that she got from some conservative people um, was outrageous. Like, bad to the point where you can look at it, and it's, like, kind of funny by this and point. And it's kind like, of funny. Like, they're, like, they're buying Bud Light and then, yeah. like, running over it with their right. F-150s. Like, but the funny thing is, it's, like, not even just that they're buying it, but it's, like, the amount of Bud Light that they are buying. Like, I mean, they're giving this company so much of their own money, and they honestly think that they're making some big statement by destroying a bought product. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just it's because pointless. they support a trans woman. Also, like, mind <laughs> you, I, before, I, before I make the points that I want to make, because I did do some research on this, um, I try and stay educated myself so I can then relay this to our people that listen and view this. Um, Bud Light is not the only company that puts a rainbow on their stuff. There's a lot of other companies Pride. that do it. We're like a few weeks away from being a month out from Pride Month, mm -hmm. which is June, obviously. Um, for some that don't know, Pride Month is in June. And um, you have like countless companies. I don't know. Yeah. I can't think of one company, actually, because most companies, if they don't just slap a rainbow on their stuff, they at least donate to pro-LGBTQ companies, etc. You know, they do all right. these different things. They take part in Pride. They donate to Pride organizations. And they do a bunch of things for the community. So mm -hmm. it's one thing to slap a rainbow on something and say, hey, happy Pride. Happy Pride. I mean, good for you for being yeah. inclusive. But, you know, donating and stuff, very good for them. But I, I wrote this down in my notes because I, I had to talk about this. So to the Bud Light thing. I learned that in 1977, Bud Light became the default cheap beer at gay bars after a labor union and LGBTQ groups organized a boycott of Coors, which is another beer brand, by the way. Mm -hmm. Me and you don't really drink beer, so yeah. I didn't know if you would know Coors. To protest Coors' practice of forcing employees to take polygraph tests that included questions about their sexual orientation and they did something similar uh, that Canada did at the time called the, f the Fruity Test, I think it was called, mm -hmm. um, to make sure they don't hire anyone in the LGBTQ community. Well, of course, that's Interesting a priority. Name. Yeah, <laughs> of course, that's a priority for that company. But after it was boycotted, Bud Light became the main be cheap, cheap beer in bars starting in 77 and still is to this day. Mm on tap in most gay bars. I mean, yeah, especially now with how many people are buying it and destroying it. <laughs> exactly, <gonna> yeah. <laughs> I want to drink Bud Light, and I have celiac disease, so that would make me sick, but it made me want to pick one up and start chugging it and be like, yeah. Can't the grave, like, worth it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this is so worth going to the hospital for, probably, because that's so much, so much gluten. And then I wanted to make another point that if you were alive in the 80s, which is not us, but I learned that there was a Bud Light dog mascot named Spuds McKenzie. And back in the day when they were casting for the lovable brand mascot, um, there were very strict rules against showing dog penis on screen. <laughs> and I literally can't say that without laughing. So the role went to a female dog with the name of Honey Tree Evil Eye. That's an interesting Yeah, that's name. real. Okay. That's real. That's a real thing that I, happens. I mean, that's why I'm going to name my firstborn. Who, <laughs> because they couldn't show that, the dog's private parts, on screen, and they had to make it a girl. They had to dress the girl dog like a boy in suits, football gear, and, like, surrounded her okay. with hot women. And so, oh. if you think about it... Oh, wait a minute. So, wait. Spud, <laughs> Spuds McKenzie was trans. <laughs> was a trans ad for Bud Light way back when. I was even going to ask, like, how uh, how did they, like, approach taking a dog 
and saying, let's make this dog ma- like more like a man. Yeah. Like I was like, I, w- I was so curious to see how their process was going to do that. And it was about as stereotypical as I can think. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it's ironic that like these people, oh, and not to mention after the fact, after Spuds sadly passed away, um, her owners had to fight off people that were trying to dig her up out of the grave to see if she had a penis. That bizarre, right? That's weird. <laughs> kind of sounds like what a lot of people are saying about Dylan Mulvaney. So that's so crazy. They really, really want to know what everyone has in their pants. And yeah. it's like, why do you care? Yeah. You're so weird for that. I, I think the funny thing is too about like going back to like all the people who were like hating on Bud Light now because of this. They weren't like, as, at least as far as I'm aware, they they weren't like not like they were open to the fact that they supported the LGBTQ community. It wasn't like a secret thing that mm-hmm. like suddenly got brought to light. It just happens that a lot of people didn't do a quick Google search. <laughs> it's. Oh, God, it's so funny. It's just funny to me. I don't know. I just had to bring it up because I just thought it was the most bizarre thing I've ever heard of. Like, all my my TikTok for you page and, like, the thing about me is I am not really active on, like, any social media, like, at all except TikTok. But I don't, like, post anything or anything. Um, It is really funny to me how many videos I've seen of people getting in trucks and, like, running over all of these beer cans or like going in stores and like destroying it and then ending up getting arrested <laughs> i'm pretty sure there was one guy correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure there was one guy that destroyed like packs or cases i guess they're called mm-hmm. you can tell i don't drink beer like ever because i can't I like my packs juice. of cores thinking that it was bud light <laughs> And it, yeah, and it was the wrong brand. And it was the completely <laughs> wrong brand. And he was like, I don't like trans people. Continues to destroy these, and it's the wrong brand. And yeah, it's wrong like, brand. you look like an idiot. I'm pretty sure he ended up getting arrested anyway. I'm pretty sure he yeah. also got arrested, probably for destruction of property, <laughs> among <laughs> other things. But so that was very interesting. I didn't really get involved or hear about any of that until it hit mm-hmm. my TikTok for you page. And I was like, why is everyone destroying Bud Light? Mm-hmm. Like, I had to research Let's just boycott beer in general because no one likes the taste of it. And if you do, you're a college student. So congratulations. <laughs> you're probably still in debt. But um, <laughs> so moving past the Bud Light thing, I also wanted to bring up trans people playing sports, which I know is like super touchy subject mm-hmm. for most people. But I wanted to get your thoughts on that before I kind of piped in a little bit. To be honest, I never really got – separation of gender in sports in the first place like if any if people want to play sports well who are we to sit there and be like eh, no wait hold on hold on hold on you're physically fit you're capable you're more than willing to learn this is what you've been <laughs> life dreaming what is in your pants exactly the, like that why is that exactly. the determining factor to me like i i don't get that there are some of the most like I can't speak actually. Uh, okay. s- some of the most, I feel like, athletic and like amazing sports players. Usually, it's not like always men or like always women. Like, yeah. I I don't it's definitely get, a mix. Yeah, yeah, like I I don't get why, especially and now like so many people are upset if like a sports player will turn out to be a trans person or like somebody who is trans wants to get into sports and people are just like, no, absolutely not. You're not allowed. Yep. Like, that's just stupid. <laughs> like, there's no logical reasoning behind that. It's, yep. I mean, it's the same of, like, how when, I, I, I'm pretty sure the, this was overturned now, but, like, for how for a while, trans people couldn't join the military. Um, and I'm pretty sure that was overturned, but. I'm pretty sure, but I honestly don't know. Yeah, like. I don't pay attention to a lot of federal stuff right now, if you want me to be honest. But it just, like. In a similar sort of topic, I, d- I just don't get why that matters to so many people when it doesn't even affect them. It has to do with their kids, uh, who they s- care so dearly about, but not other kids. No. It's just their own. They care about their kids unless their kid turns out to be trans. Then uh, Yeah, and then they're like, own. sorry. <laughs> sorry for your luck. Uh, who's your name? Um, What's your name again? But I, I wanted to say to that is like, to me, and I've had like, 
a lot of discussions with a cousin about it, with my parents and some friends. And a lot of it to me is just like, I obviously want them to be able to do what they want to do. Right. Right. Because I am also trans. So, I, of course, I want the, what's best for whatever makes someone happy, you know, right. and whatever brings them joy. And if that's sports, then so be it. And I think it's okay as long as someone's hormone levels are, you know, like where they're supposed to be medically. Right. You know, like if a health professional looks at them and says, like, your estrogen is that of a cis woman. Okay, well, if their levels are that of a cis woman, they are a woman. They should be able to play women's sports. Right. Same goes for, for boys. So it's like I don't have a problem with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And – there's all like we're all different even though we have so much in common right that's the point of this show is like to point out our commonalities but right. also educate our differences and a lot of that is like a lot of us are different like you're tall i'm short if we played basketball you would probably slap the ball out of my hand right <laughs> so it's like and i was assigned female at birth so it's like yeah of course there's going to be differences yeah. but that doesn't give me an advantage or you an advantage i don't think as long as the hormone levels are right that compared to yeah. whatever a medical professional considers the levels to be normal normal sorry let me add some quotes to that a regular level to play sports with right. other people of the same gender yeah yeah it i mean even all the time like um when i worked uh, last semester at our school's recreation center, there were people all the time who, I mean, besides the crazy instances that happened at that job, I, I saw somebody once stand on a table and have it snap in half. Um, that was a really weird instance. Speechless. Yeah, but all Why the time. Why on the table? I don't know. This was also the same night that they had me crawl around in the uh, air, air ventilation system. So... <laughs> Then there was one night also as well, just just for a bit of comedy, uh, I had to escort a, like, 50-year-old man who uh, really wanted to walk around in, like, really visible Speedos. Um, I kept having to go up to him and be like, please put your clothes on, and he just wouldn't, so I had to let, ask him to leave. But uh, back on topic. Um, <laughs> Yikes. All the time in the, um, like, basketball courts or, like, you know, like any of the sports, like, all students there were playing sports. It wasn't yeah. like predominantly male or predominantly female or like. And we want to go to the basketball court sometime soon. Yeah. And yeah, I'm five two. What about it? But like. <laughs> what about it? Honestly, and yeah, there always are gonna be those people. Like uh, this is just true for gyms, especially because I when I go to a gym, you know, once in a blue moon, I feel <laughs> <laughs> I always feel very self conscious about the like way I look and like you know. Same. Especially if, like, I'm going up to, like, people who look like they could probably beat Captain America in an arm wrestling competition. Like, Some and, people on those campus are huge. Yeah, and like, I... Big muscles. Yeah, and I go up and, like, you know, I try to, you know, with the five-pound weights. I'm like, oh! But, <laughs> <laughs> but, and I feel really self-conscious about the way I look. But honestly, most people don't really care. Like, at the end of the day. And yeah. if there is one person who is judging you, that person is small and insignificant for even, like, judging you. Like, people exactly. are there to feel better about themselves, you know, whether that be, you know, just, like, how they look or just, like, you know, trying to feel good about themselves. Exercise can also be a way to, like, de-stress yourself. Like, when I'm stressed, I go on walks. But, um, yeah. but like... A lot of the time in the like basketball courts and like th this all had a roundabout point, I promise. Uh, You're but, good. but this all, uh, th there was never any like, nobody was ever like, oh, that's weird. There's people playing basketball and there's both men and women on the field. Like, yeah. It, so I just think more of that needs to be like shown and visible. And I just feel like, unfortunately, it's not. Yeah, I know fitness is a huge. I'm so sorry. We're so tired. Both of us are so mentally exhausted. We keep yawning. So let's be real. We're just yawning. That's why I cover my mouth. Um, I'm just being, I will always be honest on this podcast. I never want to not tell the truth. 
Um, I agree. I know a lot of people that fitness is a huge outlet. Like my brother works out a lot. Right. And that's a huge outlet for him, like to de stress and just take care of himself. You know, yeah. everyone loves feeling healthy, of course. Yeah. No one loves feeling unhealthy. Uh, that's a huge thing for, I know, trans guys as well is like fitness. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've had a personal trainer for a little bit and I've lost some weight and, I'm I'm happy with my results, I guess, but I'm gonna keep going. Thanks. Um, but I'm gonna keep going and trucking along, and you know, trying to make make myself the body that I want to live yeah. in, of course. But you know, just also trying to enjoy the journey yeah. and everything. And but I like just wish that everyone would be more inclusive all around. Yeah. I really don't care who plays basketball at the gym. Um, I also I I don't have a kid, obviously, but if I put myself in the place of a parent. I don't know why you care about what's other in other people's pants as long as they are allowed to play the sport because of like their hormone levels right. needing something, which in most states right now, I'm pretty sure your levels have to be a certain amount before you could play a sport if you are trans. Mm -hmm. So it's like if they meet that, you shouldn't regulate them yeah, anymore. No, it, absolutely not. Um, honestly, though, what's – kind of funny though like slightly off topic but on sports is i've only ever been to one sports game in my entire oh, life weird. and i sat there for four and a half hours because it was raining and the what game was delayed watch? it was baseball it was at the louisville slugger field louisville Slug yeah i did it all the high fives all around yeah, today yeah. that was the only baseball game i went my grandma brought me and I'm brought taking me you to a football <laughs> game well, duly noted um i was bribed by my grandmother with dipping dots um rightfully so if you prescribe me with dipping dots i'll go to anything but um <laughs> i don't know if they have them at the uk football game but you have to go yeah i mean as the long biggest as it, part is drinking we're both 21 um but i was actually born in 1984 i do want to make that a record <laughs> <laughs> no seriousness today at this table at all but yes kentucky football for sure mm -hmm. we gotta go um so I have not been cleaning the bathrooms at work. I won't really? say where I work. Um, but um, I told my boss that I didn't feel comfortable cleaning them because I said, I don't feel safe here in Richmond, Kentucky. <laughs> I said, I, I am not going in the women's bathroom to clean or the men's bathroom to clean. And if I ever go to the bathroom at work, which if you know me, when I'm out in public, I'd normally avoid going to the bathroom as long as I can. That my ADHD also contributes to that, so I really don't have to go until I absolutely have to go. But um, here at school, I any bathroom is is safe for me. I feel at least in this building. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely at work, I've definitely refused to clean bathrooms. Mm -hmm. You know, respectfully of course, but I've just been like, I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And so my boss, you know, has other people go do it, which is nice. But um, the bathroom thing is definitely super complicated. Uh, yeah. super complicated thing that's happening because that also has to do with some of the legislation that was passed which i have more information about that now um after recently going to a meeting about it so i do have more to add to that but the bathroom thing is a lot yeah. to deal with as a trans person yeah. a very uncomfortable but also comfortable space for some people mm -hmm. so some people that pass um you know can go to the bathroom and not fear discrimination but those of us that are kind of in the in-between space of still being on hormones and you know i'm still growing my facial hair i promise i have some by the way i don't you probably can't see it in this lighting it's nicer than mine honestly it, I, it's <laughs> just blonde and you can't see it it's so annoying but i'm growing it out and i don't plan on shaving anytime soon till i ha have to and it looks tacky so um that's just my my comfort level <laughs> But um, the you bathroom know, stuff with some of the bills is complicated, but I'll get into that in a second. I was going to let you comment. I just on, – on the subject of bathrooms, now this I, – I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and mm -hmm. just say I hate urinals. I absolutely hate them. <laughs> that is one of my biggest insecurities. Because they're dirty? Well, not only that they're dirty, but, like, I never got – like – I again just for context I am non-binary but I was born I was assigned male at birth um and I know like a lot of the times like in high school all of my like guy friends they always talk about like 
how like it's not weird to be next to somebody in a urinal. It, yes, is. it is. I promise you it is. It's the weirdest experience. Any chance I, I get, I'm going to I don't use a urinal, and I know that there's, like, a rule, right? Honestly, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've used one in, like, maybe 87 years. Like, Because <laughs> you... I can't say that about you on a podcast. But. I sit down. I sit down when I pee. <laughs> I'll say it. Like <laughs> They sit down to pee so they don't need a urinal. <laughs> it, I just, I don't get how people, like, how, like, I, I, it, I'm so uncomfortable when I do that. I just, like, I don't understand how people can use urinals and be comfortable. But, just... I mean, you know, what, what makes you happy makes you happy. But, like, also for me personally, those make me very uncomfortable. So any chance I get, I'm in a stall. <laughs> Yeah, most of them flood anyways, but that's besides the point. But I learned that, like, so with the with Cinnabon 150, which I've talked about for three episodes in a row now, um, welcome to the club. This is Kentucky. This is what we're talking about now. Sorry I have to do it. Not really sorry, actually, because, you know, um, I feel the need to educate people. But um, recently in a meeting that I went to, I found out that some aspects of the bill are – going to be the ACLU is going to sue am I phrasing that right is going to sue about the healthcare part right mm -hmm. with about the hormones and everything for the under 18 year olds right um, but they don't plan to take action I believe as of last I heard that they don't plan to take action for the education part of it mm -hmm. which is a tough spot because I know for for teachers they are very confused because the Kentucky Department of Education did not release very good guidance mm -hmm. on anything because nothing in the bill says teachers have to call you by your dead name because that's your legal name. Right. That's not really the language, at least, at, you know, what I was told from, a, you know, a, a good source, a reliable source who just a lawyer, I'll say, um, said that nothing in the bill requires them to dead name or use the wrong pronouns for people so the the bill is basically for people that want to mm. so if a teacher wanted to dead name someone they couldn't get in trouble for it is basically what it says because what was scary about it was okay our teacher is going to have to start calling these kids by their dead name mm -hmm. even if they don't want to because like that's so wrong <laughs> that's so messed that's up really bad. it's already messed up in general don't get me wrong but i guess now it's good to hear that like the bill allows for some room for interpretation mm -hmm. to where it's like, okay, well, I guess if there's, if there's a preferred name that student prefers, yeah. the teacher can hopefully call them that because most teachers I know, they're, they don't, they're not in the business of dead naming people. Mm -hmm. You know, they respect their own students yeah. as they should. I, it's only been rare occurrences where I've really seen that happen. And yeah. I mean, it's terrible each yeah. time it does, but. Yeah, um, but, you know, it's just, it's hard. And then, like, the GSA, so GSA stands for Gay Straight Alliance or stands for something else in some other context, but Gay Straight Alliance is what it was called at my high school. I don't know if you had one or if you went to any club meetings, but it was a club for gay people, straight people, to be allies and, you know, spend time together and, and learn. And a lot of times we would talk about, like, proper sex ed and um, get information from trans people. They would come guest speak and we would also have check-ins for mental health and the tricky part of the bill is that GSA you know, GSAs are all around Fayette County. I assume they're also in Jefferson County, although I can't say for sure, but I want to guarantee that they probably are. Probably. Jefferson County is freaking huge. And so all these GSAs these coordinators, teachers, advisors, whatever, don't know what the limit is with that. Mm -hmm. Like, none of this bill is very specific, mind you. Like, all of this stuff that we've covered with healthcare and education, which is a majority of what the bill covers, none of it's super specific. All of it's super broad. And teachers are basically being given a piece of paper saying, you interpret this. Mm -hmm. And it's like... We just had uh, Megan Trainer go on a podcast, by the way. This is, like, pop culture-esque. Megan Trainer went on her own podcast and said, F teachers. I don't know the context of this because I haven't yeah, listened to it yeah. fully. Huh. But I know that, like, someone, they were talking about educators, and she was like, 
F teachers. And so educators like all around the world are responding to her saying like, F teachers, like, do you know what we're dealing with right now? Like, they friend, have to, they have teachers. to deal, yeah, we have <laughs> to deal with all of these bills passing around the country, the anti-trans bills, anti-LGBTQ bills, all of the school shooter drills that they have to face and pretend that there's an actual shooter in their school, which we did at least two, three times a semester at our high school. Um, that was terrifying. Teachers have to deal with that right now. And you're saying F teachers? Wow. And like she she is very outspoken about, um, I think she homeschools her kid. I don't even know if her kid's old enough to go to school, but I think she's outspoken about having her kid homeschooled in the future, but not everyone can, yeah. can afford to do that in their life, unlike a, a pop artist. So it's just like, it was, right. it was very ignorant and like mm -hmm. her apology was not really sincere to I educators. Like I feel like that happens a lot when like, big celebrities or like big time people have to come out and just be like i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry it's not just a little I'm mistake sorry. to say it F won't teachers. happen again <laughs> it's a very very generalized comment yeah. like you know like i've met yeah. some in fact i actually know a teacher who went out of her way to make sure that i did get I can't speak, actually, it turns out this time. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> I knew a teacher. We forgive you. <laughs> I knew a teacher in high school. There we go. Um, who went out of her way to make sure that I did good in her class. Like, she would take time out of her busy schedule to, like, find me during a, like, study period and would be yeah. like, I just want to let you know, like, this is what I think you're doing good. And she would literally, like, go out of her way to, like, give me motivational speeches be like i've made plenty of mistakes yeah. you know at your age you know i just want you to know that like it's possible no matter how hard it seems you have the strength to do it i legitimately don't think i would have gotten through that class or any of my future classes without her like she went out of her way to make sure that i because i have like 27 <laughs> different learning disabilities maybe <laughs> um so reading and writing for me in particular is very difficult like i i can look at like you know in all seriousness like they're trying to be serious but they won't yeah like like and like but like really like in, and especially in reading like um high school or college textbooks i legitimately have a very difficult time looking at any of those where i look at them for more than a second and they fly off the page and they're everywhere nothing the makes letters sense. are flying in the yeah air. It, it, it just it doesn't make sense to me and i can't retain any of any of the information after i read it yeah um and so with like struggles like that in high school and especially in writing intensive classes or writing, I, I struggle writing paragraphs. Like I can write one paragraph and I'm like, huh, done for the day. <laughs> but, um, so like, again, I have had experiences with teachers who genuinely want to educate you and want to help you and want to help you grow as a human. Mm -hmm. But there are teachers who are unfortunately just people I would say shouldn't be teaching like it's so rare but most of the time it's older people and again I have had while I've had experiences with the good I have had experiences with the bad for people I can say you don't inspire me to want to learn more about this yeah. you don't inspire me to want to be in this department anymore <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah you know who you are <laughs> like yeah. you, you know <laughs> We've been to you before. but um yeah it so I, th I think, yeah, just kind of like generalizing me, like all teachers are bad. Again, I like I know, and I'm sure other people know from experience that there are I good teachers. I take that so personally. Yeah, there are other te there are really good teachers who will go above and beyond for you. That's a really good segment. I don't know how we did that, but that's a really good I'm segment. I'm actually a genius. I have our, to let you yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> we just read each other's minds over here. It's, well, I promise we're not communicating in any way, but looking at each other and winking every now and then. But. <laughs> <laughs> right, or touching um, feet we actually uh, touch commercial break actually what are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. but that's a good segment into like kind of talking about mental health because i did want to bring that up because i think that you know mental health is so tough in general right now it's tough to tough to be happy um mm -hmm. in this kind of culture and, and environment right now it's it's very hard to feel mm -hmm. like you can do healthy things 
And so, like, taking care of yourself, the bare, which is, mind you, like, the bare minimum for someone our age, mm-hmm. taking care of ourselves and, like, having proper hygiene is hard as hell to, like, keep up with when you're struggling. And I, I do want to shout out after bringing that up because that literally, I promise that hurt my feelings when I saw it. Like, I have no doubt in my mind that maybe she didn't mean the worst when she said mm-hmm. that. But if you say F all teachers, like... That's really aggressive. And I think also a lot of that is a lot of what is taught in school is not the teacher's fault. That's just our education system. That's not something that they can really help with. Yeah. So they're handed the content most yeah. of the time. They so don't make that up. And that, now that could be an episode in and of itself. The yes, <laughs> we education. should bring up. That would probably be next season. <laughs> but um, But I just wanted to say, like, shout out to all educators that have ever – ever taught anybody ever (laughs) if you're if you're listening i think that i i won't name names just for privacy purposes but the high school i went to there was not one teacher that i didn't think i could go to with a problem Mm -hmm. and say here is something i'm struggling with please help me i would not have graduated high school and i will not graduate i would not have graduated college Mm -hmm. i don't know how to say that i'm sorry i i'm also at a loss for words but the people in this specific department, I'm not just saying this because they're the reason I have this podcast, but all of the professors in the communications department here at EKU, phenomenal people. All the mentors I've had in my life have been educators besides maybe one, and that's like my aunt, but like people I consider mentors at least have been educators and you know, it just makes me so mad and upset and frustrated for them that they have so much on their plates right now and a good portion of it of it has to do with stuff that's completely out of their hands yeah and And they can't control that it's it can be inspiring honestly teachers like if we look at it through lens of like teachers are people they're not teachers by like i had nothing better to do people teachers are people who want to educate kids who want to help people grow who want to help people steer in the right direction in their life they're people who want to be there for other people they want this next generation to be the change yeah and i'm not talking about any political propaganda i'm talking about simply being a good freaking human yeah be kind there are a lot of that's the main thing that i learned from every high school teacher every single one taught me to be kind to myself and to be kind to others no matter our differences yeah like i've had lessons you know where there were people in my high school like in my grade who i did not get along with (laughs) but my professor whom i just talked about earlier would be like listen like sometimes there are just people like this in life and be the bigger person and just be better than them Like, be the bigger person. Be the bigger, you know, like you're fi- be the bigger person. You hear that when you're 15, and you go, "But they're annoying." But like, like even at 22, when I oh, have yeah. someone tell me be the bigger person, I'm just like, I'm, I, I've rarely never been the bigger person. But sometimes in those situations, when you just want to be like, God, like you, like you, you just want to be upset real with quick. them, <laughs> and it's just like, I'm a Virgo, and normally I don't talk about horoscope stuff, but. I promise you, I'm a Virgo through and through. I use my words. That's why I made this podcast. I use my words against anyone that says anything about me. Like, if you want to talk shit, then talk it. Go for it. I'll give it right back to you. Promise. I was raised. I was raised by two really amazing parents. So if you, I was never taught to fight back with anything but words. Mm -hmm. So if you want to come for me, go for it. I was actually um, raised by Spartans in ancient Rome. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, actually. You know the movie 300? I was in it. I'm in the background. Like, if you... <laughs> Are you in the back of the scene where... I'm in the hole that the, he gets kicked in. Is this the movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, were you in the ba- at the bottom of the hole? Like, I'll catch you if you just, like, angle your body a certain way. <laughs> yeah, no, that was me. That was me. I was off camera, but, like... You could... <laughs> no way. No way. Oh, my God. Um... <laughs> can't take you seriously right now and i have to be serious um (laughs) before we get on to sam's segment found family i wanted to quickly mention um that you know dylan mulvaney made some comments after some of the bud light hate and everything it was a whole thing 
right? It was it was on Twitter. It was trending everywhere. Like yeah. there was a lot of people talking about this. It came up at the comedy show I went to a few weeks ago, the Burt Kreischer comedy show in Lexington. It came up, and there may or may not have been a slur said in the crowd, Oops. but that is not for this podcast because yeah. we don't say that here, not on air. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> being completely unserious right now, but. Um, before that, you know, Dylan Mulvaney made some comments about the other people in the community needing to step up. The LGB people in the community need to step up, and that is the truth right now. And so that's what I'm asking from everyone in the community that listens, is that find out what you can do in your community to help out these kids that have these bills being passed that are absolutely terrible Whoever's around you, wherever you're listening from, even if it's not Kentucky, you know, you can find stuff on bills that are being passed in your state and what you can do to be better. Whether you can go out and protest or if you just want to donate or if you just want to spread the word and be like, hey, like, pay attention to this. Maybe we shouldn't be voting for people that are actively going to strip away other people's human rights. Basic because, human rights. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if you're right, left, middle, in between. It does not matter. It doesn't. These are human rights. Human rights are human rights. And like I said in the first season, non-negotiable. We are not here to compromise on human rights, and that's the whole point of our community, and hopefully moving forward we can we can get somewhere with all of yeah. this. And I do have hope that everything is going to be okay. Yeah. And, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't have said that last episode, but I'm saying <laughs> that now is that everything – We've faced so much adversity as a community for decades now, mm -hmm. and we've always prevailed somehow, yep. and justice has always served, and love has always won as it should. So on that note, I will hand it over to Samuel for our segment, Found Family. All right. So on this week of Found Family, right? Uh, hold on. My phone is loading here. I have no service. Um <laughs> Lord. Okay. So on this segment for Found Family, this comes from TikTok user, and I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it, but I'm going to do my best. Try your best. Kira Gamer 112. All right. Um, she uses she/her pronouns um, okay. and refers to herself as KG. KG. Okay. That's good. And so this talk, this talk, this TikTok, basically. You're almost right. Um, <laughs> I was halfway. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um, she has an Etsy page, and she does digital artwork, um, which, you know, like, maybe I'll get there one day. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an art major. But <laughs> we can make an Etsy for you. Um, where she is taking all the different LGBTQ plus pride flags and making them into cute little stickers. And we've That's looked so cool. at her Etsy page. They're really cute. So They're very honestly, cute, and they're shout very out. cheap. Yeah. yeah, we are. We do plan to thank you, uh, KG, for spreading kindness and love through that. That mm -hmm. is very cool. And all of your stickers look amazing. Um, I need to buy some for my laptop, and I'm honestly going to after we record this. But um, we're going to link her Etsy, right? Her her Etsy um, in the description below mm -hmm. of this video. The, the sticker at the end of the TikTok is really cute, too. It's a little snake. That's really cute. I think snakes are cute, but and it's waving. Is that a snake with a pride flag? Yeah, it's, he's waving a little pride flag. Oh my flag. god, I he's love really it. cute. And there's like more of these amazing designs on her Etsy page. So. How cool! I love people that do that, like take their abilities and spread yeah. kindness, whether they identify in the community or not. You know, I think that's really cool. Well, thanks for that segment. Sarah. Yeah, I'm happy to. Provide. I think that this episode has been one of my favorites. I feel. <sighs> At the most at ease that I can, honestly, because mm -hmm. um, it's been a really tense past few weeks for mm -hmm. everyone, I think, in this community especially. But with that wonderful note and that wonderful found family segment for today, um, I wanted to say that, unfortunately, our last episode is going to be the next one. Um, episode, I believe, number seven of this season. Definitely not what we were aiming for, but we'll take it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a high schooler on to talk about the bill that was passed, um, a little bit about his identity, and a little bit about his family, too, because I think all of his siblings are in the community, mm. which is very interesting. So, um, yeah, I look forward to talking to him next week, and I'm super excited to see what kind of conversation we can get out of that for the last episode of Queerly Thinking. 
but I am your host, Reese Wheatley, and be kind to yourselves. I'm your host, Samuel Stone, and I'm running on two and a half hours of sleep. Have a good day.